Let's begin. Find the top of your skull. And as you're aligning it over your perineum, your tailbone, feel for both sides of the neck and throat softening, lengthening. Now, if you find yourself trying to pull the head up, you'll likely lose that sense of gravity and the bones and the ground and the sit bones. So in a lot of ways, we're just positioning, repositioning things slightly. To get a finer and finer sense of the, move, the movements of the body, the subtle movements, energy. Connect to breath. Is subtly starting to lengthen, gentle lengthen. So the breath may get a little softer. We're just allowing the breath to have its space, to make generous contact with our interior space, the inside of the skull, the center of the chest. The perineum.
And we'll just do two rounds where the exhale becomes an Uddiyana. So inhaling just as smoothly. And begin exhale using those low belly muscles. It'll help give us support so that we're not collapsing the, the breath out of our body. Place the hands in front, so down in front of the shins. And as you're getting emptier, continue drawing the belly muscles in. When you relax the belly muscles, naturally there should be an inhale right there for you. Just come up. And give it a moment. And just do one more. So when you're exhaling, the low belly will give you support. Bring the hands in front of the shins. Continue drawing the belly back. And when you're through with that, reconnecting to breath will cross the left over right, cross-legged or half lotus. With our left leg over our right, we'll begin with a twist to our left. Just letting the, the breath be foregrounded at every moment of this practice. Exhaling, turning to your left. And when we release, we'll switch sides. We've got a right over left cross. So we'll just pause and just help ourselves remember the breath. So if I'm saying inhale or exhale and you don't feel that you're in sync with that, just pause until your match, your breath and your move 
match. Think from the agreement that all of these various styles of yoga have with each other, that the breath is linked to the body, to the movement. So breath led. When we release, what would that be like to pick up a cup or a pencil with our breath? Now they sound like banal activities, but it's that linkage that's so simple and may just create enough sacred pause for us to Remember, right? Let's unwind the legs. We'll lie on back. You can do that on exhale or inhale. <laughs> We've got the feet off the ground, the knees over the pelvis or over the lower abdomen. Hmm. Inhale the head and the shoulders just slightly off the ground. And the tailbone shifts toward the pubic bone. Exhale, reach out through the left leg. Draw the low belly down. I'm going to add a move in just a moment. Inhale, bend left knee. Curl the tailbone, so tailbone, pubic bone. You can feel or imagine that space of the pelvis. Exhale, the right leg out. And the tailbone's still curling drawing the low belly down. Inhale, bend the right knee. You're going to add a move. This is for the, the butt. And curl tailbone. Exhale the left leg out. Take your left hand. Reach down to your left cheek. Find the sit bone. And just feel if those muscles around the sit bone engage as you're curling the tailbone. Pull low belly down. Inhale, bend that knee. Curl tailbone, exhale, reach the right leg out. Use your right hand, grab down by the right butt, the right sit bone. And as you're curling the tailbone, you can just feel if there's a connection here. Pull low belly down. Inhale, bend the right knee. Curl tailbone, exhale, left leg out reaches, left hand, find sit bone. And you're just learning if there's kind of any agreement between the, the buttock muscle and you're reaching that left leg out, pull low belly down, just using the fingertips. Okay. Inhale, bend left knee. Curl tailbone, exhale, right leg reach out, right hand grab right butt, there you go. And just feel if it turns on, it's okay if it doesn't. Pull low belly down. 
right? You're gonna do the next two on each side on your own. Okay. So the purpose of this now, just finding the, the buttock and just remembering it and helping it turn on volitionally, It's just to help drive feeling awareness to the pelvis. In some of these poses, it will be helpful to find those butt muscles. In some of these poses, and some of you may have discovered this yesterday, it may be really helpful to feel that area between where your fingertips are touching, to feel that area relax. Okay, It's going to be a little different from person to person. But feeling that area relax or feeling those muscles contract can be really, really valuable. And sometimes just by using the fingertips and pulling a little bit, I know you're probing, but just by pulling a little bit, you may just get a feeling sense of the tone of the hamstring, the, there's muscles around the anus, the perineum. So you'll be getting a, a clearer sense of what other kind of activity might might occur around the, the perineum, the anus, the hamstrings, the, the sit bones, the tailbone. Okay, it's good stuff to know. We'll just do one more. Frog lifting through. When you lie back, With uh, bent legs, feet off ground, separate the legs widely. Um, over the last week or so, I've been offering that you can use a roll on your pubic bone and you can keep your head down. Doing abdominals this way might be helpful if you have any neck concerns, might be helpful if you're trying to feel things in your pelvis, areas in your pelvis that you're not quite sure about yet. I'll just turn and show. Okay. So sometimes having the roll atop the pubic bones with the head down allows you to use your hand pressure to physically and manually guide the halves of the pelvis. Okay, so it just could be helpful. I'll talk through of uh, frog lifting through the way we usually do it. And hands behind the head. Inhale, head and shoulders off the ground. And exhaling. Curling the tailbone. Drawing the low belly down. Inhale. Allow the tailbone to move down. Exhale. Let the low belly muscles shift the pelvis. Sometimes I try to like scoop my butt up off the ground and it's just way too much muscular engagement to feel any any uh, more finely. Inhale, allow tailbone to relax down. And then exhale, working with the low belly muscles. Pull, draw, kind of awaken those low belly muscles and just feel if the pelvis moves. 
is there a, a bit of an orchestration there between the low belly breathing and the pelvis moving? Do three more on your own, just like so. There you go. So those buttock muscles you'd turned on earlier, you may discover that they can in fact uh, relax here. You may feel them turn on here. So if I was, if I was working with a, a pelvic concern like torsion or a twist or rotation or such, I might try to feel those buttock muscles relax here. Using the roll, feeling the, the top of the butt relax. So you feel those deeper, uh, kind of intrinsic breathing companions. You can feel those working. That's great. And you'll use your hands to help your legs together when you're through. When you turn over and press up, we'll take a horse stance. We'll just come right up to standing. Okay. Now this horse stance does not need to be the deepest. So working with the horse stance, I'm telling you the purpose of these poses uh, today just so we can get some new sensitivity in the body. You know, we can use the same pose for many different purposes. So today we're using horse stance to feel this lower, this contour, this pelvic floor. If I just go really far into the stretch. I may feel my bones and my ligaments, but I don't really get a sense of the breathingness at the pelvic floor. So I'm just bending enough. And I start to feel that little, like taking the slack out. Right? That little bounce I'm doing, that's just like, that's a perfect amount. Inhale, reach the arms out to the side. We're moving into eagle. Exhale the left elbow over the right. So now that you're in a horse, in a stance, where maybe you can feel that little bounce or feel the slack taken out from around the legs, can you feel your breath there? Can you feel your breath between your pelvis and your shoulder blades? You'll notice if I sink too much, if I kind of release and get really heavy, I'll start to, I won't have that lightness. I won't have that sustain, that endurance. We'll switch sides. Inhale, unwind the arms. And exhale, the right over the left. But if I'm too high up in the pose, I may never feel that lower register. You may never feel that pelvis that is a part of this pose, a very important part of this pose. Our connection to ground, our connection through our pelvis and legs, I find it's really 
helpful in letting go. It's a, energetically, it's a way things return, return to the ground, return to the earth. So let's inhale and wind the arms, straightening the legs. And we'll heel to the feet together. Let's move on to our elbows and knees. So maybe that started to thread a connection between the shoulders and the pelvis. We'll set up the elbows under the shoulders, the knees under the hips. Inhaling the forearms, the palms down, pressing. And exhale the knees off the ground. The left foot, the uh, toes, you can momentarily step them around the right heel, lifting the pelvis up, and then raise the left leg up. And we'll switch sides to the left foot down. Use the right foot toes. You can momentarily step down through the left heel. And then raise the right foot up. But keep raising or moving the left sit bone back. Often when we weigh down that ground heel, that side of the pelvis can sometimes collapse, like in the socket, there's a little like collapse. Reach that left sit bone back, softening the neck. So as the, as the pelvis, both those sit bones can move, lift away from the lungs, the neck can relax, the neck can relax. That left sit bone, Brett, you can feel that with those inner leg muscles. Remember the, the way up by the groin muscles. Yeah, use them both, both sides. Left one, too. And then you draw that left sit bone back, the left one. Mm hmm mm hmm That's it, Susan. All right, we'll set that uh, right foot down, and we'll place the knees down. That's perfect. Slide the hands under the shoulders. We'll move directly into downward dog. Exhaling, come on in. <laughs> Inhale the right foot forward, warrior one. Exhaling, this is going to be very subtle, subtle. Reaching the tailbone down. Just lifting those inner arms up. Pressing back to that left leg. Engage those leg muscles, the quadriceps. And then as you lift those toe pads toward the kneecap, you can sink into that outer edge of heel. This is left. You feel that slight internal rotation as you reach out through that leg. And start to test the stance, just little by little. How deeply can we start to move into that warrior one without compressing the low back? Mm -hmm. 
easy twisting warrior. I'm going to leave the right arm up there. Inhale the left hand down to the ground. And exhaling, reaching the arms apart. Your chest is facing or turning to the right. There's a high degree of likelihood that connection to the left heel got a little fuzzy. Just reestablish that felt sense of a left heel contacting the ground. There you go. Ah, the legs are coming back online. It's good. <laughs> good. Was remembering the breath. Inhale, bring the right hand down to the inside of the right foot. Inside. So you have both hands on the inside of the right foot. Start by simply relaxing the neck um, and purposefully hesitating, saying head to ankle. Let's just start by relaxing the head, the neck, deepening the breath across. <clears throat> the back side of the body, widening the ribs, and all these cues I'm offering, they're really just experiments in shorthand, right? Do you have to widen the ribs? No. Do you have to feel the the widening of the ribs? No, you may feel something else entirely. How about the width of the hips? You know, feel the breath widening the hips. For some of us, it may feel very unusual or right, curious to, to feel width in a place where maybe there's a lot of narrowing contraction. Inhaling, walk the hands around the right foot. Exhale, step the right foot back and would lower to the ground. However you want to get there, through plank or using your knees. And shifting the tailbone down, reaching the legs back. Now, if your clothing is fine, if the padding under your pelvis is fine, you might be able to feel the two halves of your pelvis, the pubic bones contacting the ground. And for some of us, we may not feel two distinct halves contacting the ground until we start to turn and move those legs a little bit. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, lower down, downward dog. We remember the breath. So that when we move, inhaling the left foot forward, warrior one, bring that breath with us. <laughs> and exhaling, reaching back to that right leg, that right heel. And I do, I use a little bit of that buttock musculature if I need to. 
to sense the tailbone moving down from the, the head. Now, you don't have to rely on the musculature to feel the tailbone move down away from the low back. You may feel more of a releasing the pelvis down, and that's really nice. I'm just gonna keep edging into that stance. How deeply into the stance can we play without compressing the low back? We have to press through that right heel. We have to stay really attentive of the tailbone. Easy twisting warrior, inhale the right hand down to the ground. Exhaling, keep pressing through that right heel, opening the chest. Inhale, bring that left hand down to the ground. Both hands inside the left foot. Start by simply relaxing the head and the neck. That may in and of itself be adequate pose or stretch or what have you. If you need a little bit more to work with, you can start to bend the elbows more. It just means that you can you feel how you're getting a little bit more into the into the legs, the muscles, the the support of the legs. I'm still pressing. I'm not just stretching. I'm pressing. I'm actually working, and then I'm working in a deeper place, and then I'm working as the body's opening. So I'm not just plunging into a stretch and just kind of flopping into a deeper place, right? I'm working, yeah, it's pressing. I'm pressing and then I may descend a little and I'm pressing and I'm holding, sustaining myself there, supporting myself there and I may deepen and I'm pressing and I'm sustaining and supporting myself in that deeper place and I may deepen yet And inhale, and press the hands, uh, bring them around the left foot. Exhale the left foot back, lower down. Cobra, inhale. Exhale, lower down, downward dog. And remembering the breath. And play a little bit with the width of the body. Right? That width of the body is utterly connected to our sense of core, our sense of central, our sense of this is an energetic home. This is an embryological home. This is a structural home. So how we situate, how we sense the most central aspect of ourself often colors how far from that center we can feel. 
how much space around that center most place we can sense, right? Emil, step the, I believe we started right foot forward, warrior one. We're setting up ostrich. So we've got the interlace of the hands. And then exhaling, getting right back to it. Legs, support, strength, pressing. Press with those legs. The pressure of the legs lets us kind of soften through the core. I find it curious and very cool that somehow softening allows greater sensing. Don't take my word for it. Inhale, bring the hands down to the sacrum, release them. Set them down on the ground for support. A little realignment is in order. We're setting up for extended warrior. We need to move our feet. Our right heel may not be aligned with our back instep. So make that adjustment. I find the easiest just to move the right foot. But okay. So my right hand, my right foot very close. My right heel lined up with instep. Left thumb reach overhead. And you can feel from moving the lung. Does the lung move or does the arm limb move? You can move from both places. And you may feel how the lung moves in relation to the heart. Yeah. Press, pressing all the way through that left leg, that left heel, engaging those leg muscles. Now, remaining in this extended warrior, to find those I'm going to find the inner legs. So remember those sit bones from long, long ago, those sit bone muscles. You can start to almost scoop or gather that right cheek, that right sit bone under the lap. Kind of being carried by the weight of that, by the strength of that right cheek. And you feel that left thigh bone, that left hip bone kind of moving. It's very subtle, but moving like toward the sky or toward the wall behind you. And that may get you a great deal more kind of heightened sensation around the groin. This is great. Can you feel for breathing there? Can your pelvis remember the breath? Inhale, bring that left hand down. Set the hands on either side of your right foot. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, feel free to come up into upward dog or cobra. Exhaling, downward dog. Straight and reach through those arms. 
if we've gotten to work together with those inner and outer arms, remember those. Our body is remembering breathing. Our body is remembering its, its energetic freedom. And sometimes we just use a little, a little, a little technique or a little pulse of like a jump start. Oh yeah, I am a, my body is vital. My shoulders are vital. My pelvis does breathe. My body is breathing. Yeah. Inhale the left foot forward for ostrich. We got the hands interlaced. Exhaling. Pressing, supporting. So again, I'm not plunging down atop my joints. I'm letting those muscles work. It's nice. Remembering that vim. <laughs> As the legs work, I can soften my core. If the legs struggle, what I tend to notice is the core tightens. So give some of that work over to the legs. Let those legs work. And then feel if core can soften. All right, inhale, bring the hands down to the sacrum. We'll keep the chest rather low here for a moment. Set the hands down um, to the ground. As we reorganize our feet, I have to walk my left foot over to get the heel, the left heel, to align with the right instep. And once you have that, Keep the left hand down, ground is great, block is great. And I'll reach the right arm overhead. So I'm letting that left sit bone area muscle, so we did all that fingertip work there. Letting that left, sit bone area muscle engage in a kind of, kind of sloops under my left lap. And that right hip, that right thigh bone kind of move toward the sky, toward the wall behind me. Feel that rotation. So it starts to take you really quite, quite into the, the groin, huh? That's it, Marissa, that's it. Oh, it looks so, it looks like it feels nice. And by nice, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Zest. That's really sweet. We remember our breath. Because we can. We can remember that. Inhale, bring the right hand down. I think that's it. Yep. Yeah. Hands around the uh, left foot. Exhale, chaturanga. Hope I didn't forget anything. Inhale, upward dog or cobra. Exhaling, downward dog. Softening the neck. 
softening the neck. Now, if I sense my core, if I choose to kind of gather feeling awareness around this axis of my body, this core, as I start to gather and sense centrality and feel the top of the head and the tailbone growing effortlessly away from each other. We did a lot to enliven and remember the aliveness of the legs. Let that come on right now. Let it that be remembered. We did all this stuff with the sit bones. You may even play with, well, do I really need those buttock muscles? Can I relax? What helps me sense the tailbone? What helps me sense the perineum, the inner legs, the groin? Let me feel the width of the pelvis as you breathe, the width of the heart and the lungs as you breathe. And you may, you may like, in Natalia, finding those inner arms. So it's, it's without moving the hands, it's like hugging the space between your arms, with your arms. Those would be the inner arms. And when you get those inner arms enlivened, you'll feel how that is the, the foundation of, I guess, what we call wrapping the shoulders. So, you know, use it up. That's great stuff in there. Inhales the right foot forward as we set up for Inyo. So it's a warrior one stance. And exhaling, we'll hook the left elbow over the right. Like so, like so, hinge again straight away, bringing the, these eagle arms, these crossed arms to the inside of right thigh. Now this is maybe a third or fourth time we're visiting this stance place. Let's feel how the breath, rem or pardon me, how the pelvis is remembering breath. Maybe, maybe more than us having some task of having to shuttle breath into the body, maybe our task, if you will, is just help the body remember its most fundamental, enlivened self nature. So how do I help my pelvis remember that it's breathing and alive? Okay, inhale, we'll unwind the arms, put the hands down. Either side of right foot will step directly back, downward dog. Exhaling, pressing back, stepping back. Downward dog. Allow the throat and the neck. Find those inner arms. There's a bit of a tweeze, but the tweeze begets that rotation or that wrap of the shoulders, helps those arm bones rotate. Use your inner legs, inner hamstrings, the groins, and the groins. <laughs> Gotta draw the pelvis back as it relaxes between the sit bones. All right, last side, last one. Inhale, left foot forward. Emu. Where we exhale the right elbow over the left, and we fold the torso and these arms inside the left leg. 
And here, what if we put the inquiry a little different way? How does being here, this folded up, bent over position, how do I help myself? How do I help my pelvis? How do I help my legs remember its vital nature? Maybe part of it is our perception. Can I choose to perceive what's moving and vital and fluid and alive? So maybe I wasn't attuned to that a moment ago. There you go. Ah, yes. Good. Inhale, we'll unwind, set the hands down, last downward dog, exhale, the left foot back. Here's our downward dog, finding those inner arms, hugging, which does turn the arm bones. As the arm bones turn, the upper trapezius kind of soothe down a bit. Using those inner leg muscles all the way up to the groin to draw the pelvis back. So I can hug the space between my arms and my legs. The arms and the legs aren't moving toward each other, but I can tweeze all of that space under my body, under this, this V shape of space. You feel how that lifts and lightens the pelvis. All right, let's gently set the knees down. Let's lie on back. Shavasana. And in Shavasana, Ironically, <laughs> right? Is it time where we can forget all of that? We'll feel, we'll feel it's of the residue of our work and our focus and our breath and our, we'll feel those those happenings. But as you're resting, can you comfortably forget that whole entire practice? Simply feeling. Finding out what the body, the sacred, wondrous body remembers. And what it remembers is, may not be what it grasps onto or takes or holds or pursues. But what can be felt right now is exactly what it remembers. If you need to stay some more moments, feel free. If you'd like to move at this time, bend knees. To 
turn to a side and press with palms. Namaste. Great to have you along.